UFC 302, this is the weigh-in recap show, full card predictions, and the betting breakdown. I am very excited to talk about each of the matchups on this card after seeing the fighters on the scales. So make sure you guys smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Turn the post notifications on and make sure you share the video as well. And also note, I will be live for the entire card starting at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. UFC 302 Fight Companion going down. Don't miss it. And let's get into the first fight on the card. We got flyweights going after it here between Andre Lima and Mitch Raposo. We got Raposo coming in on short notice, making weight. And I got Lima coming in at 130, four pounds over the limit. I don't know exactly what went on with Lima. Maybe there's like an underlying injury that we don't know about. I have been on the Lima side throughout the week. I think he does have the better striking. Concerning weight miss, he did seem visibly upset after he missed weight, and we'll bring up the scale in a moment. Raposo's got better wrestling. It's just Lima's defensive abilities, specifically with get-ups, has given me confidence that he can keep this fight on the feet and do well in the striking department and beat a short-notice Mitch Raposo, but it's not an easy out. We're going to look at them on the scales. We're going to check them out. Let me shrink myself down here. We got angry Andre Lima. He is upset that he missed weight. He looks like a pouting 12-year-old. Holy shit. And let's keep scrolling down. There's more angry Lima picks. And then uh, you have Lima on the scale. My God, he looks, he looks terrified. He looks pissed. It's not like he looked flabby or out of shape weighing in either. I know it's like the upper uh, you know, portion of his torso, but he looked in shape. I mean, it just... Doesn't even seem to have cut that hard. Like, look at his face. That isn't a I'm trying to the death of me to make weight face, okay? That's a I quit the weight cut. Raposo looks like he was in pain also. We got, like, traumatic pictures here with this weigh-in recap show today. Holy hell. All right, let's keep scrolling down. There's Raposo, who for short notice came in on point, on weight. Very dedicated athlete. And I like Raposo. I've been following him since the Ultimate Fighter. It's just... Hard for me to go against Lima's skill set, which I feel like we've seen uh, show a lot of promise, right? The Muay Thai is slick. Raposo might get him down. I'll say this. Because of the weight miss with Lima, I don't know exactly what's going on with the mental. I don't know if this was a calculated weight miss. He knew he was going to come in a couple pounds over. So he said, screw it. Let's have a massive advantage. I'm still going to pick Lima, but I do think Mitch Raposo can give him a difficult fight. I think I'm going to go Lima decision officially. But him missing weight just makes me wonder. Like, I don't know what went wrong. Is it something in the camp that happened? Was there an injury? And if there was an injury, what if he wasn't wrestling? And what if Repose was able to hold him down? You get some worries. So if you're on the Lima side, I get why after a weight miss where the guy looked like he didn't really try that hard to make the damn weight, there'd be maybe some uh, doubts, some anxieties. I still think he can pull it off. But note that Raposo is pretty damn game. And I don't think Raposo's a crazy underdog. Lima's minus 270, the favorite. Raposo plus 230 is the dog. Team Raposo needs to wrestle all night long, man. All night long. Lima is a significantly slicker striker. I like Raposo's kickboxing. He's, uh, you know, comfortable in both stances. He's got a little bit of power. He's good. He's really good. I like Raposo. It's just, I think Lima's a little bit too poised and technical. But I won't lie to you. With the weight miss, it's like almost like I just want to jump ship because Raposo's from Massachusetts and I've been watching him for a long time. I kind of feel like it's turning into one of those like maybe the dog is worth a little stab as like a safety hedge on the side if you have Lima locking in a lot of your parlays. I was more confident in Lima pre-weigh-in. I'm telling you, man, this weight miss got me nervous a little bit. Lima by decision, plus 165. Raposo by decision, plus 325. Very interesting, man. Chalky line on Lima who missed weight, but this could be a gamesmanship type weight miss, and he could actually have better defensive wrestling because of it coming in heavy and against a short notice opponent. I'm going to stick with Lima. I think he wins this fight. And uh, unfortunately, I think Mitch Raposo loses the UFC debut. But good to have him on the roster. Good to have him here. Let's keep running. Next fight on the card. Ladies going after it. They fought in the street before. Now they get it in the cage. I guess they fought at the UFC PI. But it was a real fight. It wasn't an MMA fight. 
Uh, supposedly, Jocelyn Edwards beat up Eileen Perez at the UFC Performance Institute in a street fight. I don't know if it's 100% true, but I've heard, uh, actually, somebody in the Discord dropped a link to a video of a guy breaking down what happened. Pretty much, the word on the street is Eileen Perez was screaming for help as Edwards was whooping her. Now, that doesn't mean anything as far as the fight prediction. In the cage, under the fair rule set, I think Perez is landing takedowns and controlling Jocelyn Edwards for a good portion of the fight. But I will say, I mean, hearing her screaming for help, getting beaten up, doesn't give me, uh, like, pristine confidence in Eileen Perez winning. I mean, Jocelyn Edwards could be a dog in this fight. Fend off some takedowns. She is pretty game on the feet. The striking of Edwards is never a big question mark. It's the takedown defense. And Eileen Perez is a thick-bodied girl. She's strong on top. She can hold you down. She bodied Pudalova for two or three rounds. Granted, she got her ass kicked in the third. Jocelyn Edwards won a very controversial decision against Pudalova, and she was bodied in the wrestling in that fight. So I'm kind of thinking the wrestling of Perez should be a major factor here. With the personal beef, it's like you don't know if the emotions maybe overplay for Perez. And if really Edwards put an honor in the street, maybe at this fucking line, she's an okay dog. Now, I'm not trying to sway anybody's opinions. The official prediction is still Eileen Perez, but she is, you know, a bit of a favorite. We'll check them out on the scales. Edwards came in on weight. No issues here. Uh, you know, looked pretty good shape, actually. Jocelyn Edwards gave me very Jermaine D. Rondeme energy. At this, and I don't know. I don't know. I like Edwards' energy. I just, something about it, even during the face-off, which we'll bring up in a second. I, I like her energy right now. Eileen Perez, you know, she likes to twerk it. She likes to really sell her herself nicely. And, you know, she's a good-looking girl. She uses that to an event in this year. But this is a fucking fight, man. It ain't a beauty pageant. It ain't a twerking contest. I'm sure Eileen Perez absolutely 10 eights Edwards at anything like that. It was an intense face-off. And Edwards looks like a cold-bloody killer, man. It's one of these... Fuck, man. What is going on, man? The first two fights have me really sitting here thinking... And I didn't come in here preparing to pick flip or anything like that on this matchup beforehand. I was going to let it all flow as we go down. I think Jocelyn Edwards is a live underdog. If she can keep the fight on the damn feet, she's going to touch up Perez. The thing is, Eileen Perez has good wrestling and Jocelyn Edwards has shit wrestling. <sighs> I'm getting swayed by the street fight. Okay, so this is my thought process. From all of the evidence set forth from watching pre-fight film and knowing how they've performed in the UFC, the pick is Eileen Perez. But hearing about the street fight, and we don't know the exact accuracy of it, I think money line wise, I'm more in the dog or pass side at the end of the week. Because Edwards also look like a badass. I don't think she's a terrible underdog. I really don't think she's a terrible underdog. I feel like... This is one of those fights, too, where maybe the live betting is your best bet. Because if Eileen Perez is successfully landing takedowns a lot, right? She's getting her down. She's holding her. We know the way this fight might end up going. But if Jocelyn Edwards fends off some takedowns, I think she should be nasty from kickboxing range. So please, pay attention to the live lines. I'm not into the Perez minus 200. Edwards at plus 170. It's a coin flip fight, man. It's a scrappy-ass fight. I was looking for a coin. I was going to flip it. I don't have one on me. You know what? We don't need the coin flip. Oh, my goodness, man. My fucking goodness, this fight. I love it, though, because I actually think these girls are going to bring a pretty intense fight. Probably over minus 275. Uh, Perez decision, minus 110. Edwards decision, plus 250. Plus 170 for Edwards, and she supposedly won the street fight. So, official... MMA analyst prediction, okay? I'm going to give you Perez by decision. But the street fight rumors and shit, maybe Jocelyn Edwards is worth looking at and especially live. I think this is a fight where if you're considering throwing down, wait till you do it live. You're going to see what happens. Like find out after the first two minutes, does Edwards defend the takedowns? Because if she does, she's in this fight. If she can't defend the takedown, I think she's getting bodied for three rounds. We're going Perez by decision, but definitely, uh, you know, more to this fight than just the official prediction. Next fight on the card, we have Mickey Gall versus Basil Hefez. I'll tell you something. Basil Hefez, I thought he was taking steroids, but... He's under the UFC drug testing, and the physique is looking similar. We'll pull it up in a second. If you don't know my pick, I have been going with the absolute fucking savage, Basil Efez, all week because how can I not pick him? 
He gave Jack Della Maddalena an extremely tough fight and narrowly got a win. I mean, he lost the split, so one judge gave it to him. And then he takes on Mickey Gall, who got ground and pound TKO'd by Diego Sanchez, was knocked out striking against Mike Malat. I think Hafez bodies Mickey Gall in this fight. As far as the scales, let's check them out. Let me shrink myself down here. Let's see, let's see. Let's see what we're looking at. My God, how many pictures of Eileen Perez? Hafez looks fucking scary and Jack. No? You don't think so? I know you do. Holy shit. Mickey Gall looks like... You know when like the childhood movie star gets old? Right there. That's Mickey Gall's vibe. Like he still has the face of a kid, but he's now in his mid-30s. Or I guess early 30s. I'll give him some benefit of the doubt. I think that Hafez is going to beat him, man. Mickey Gall has never lived up to the hype. He hasn't been super consistent with his career. He's going to lose. Hafez is just too much. Let's check out the face-off, though. There it is. To be fair, though, Mickey Gall came in in great shape, and he's definitely putting in the work. It's just I think Hafez is a more legit prospect, right? Mickey Gall got into the UFC as the guy to fight CM Punk. I mean, two of his MMA wins, right? His record is 7-5, and five, okay? So... Think about this for a second. Seven and five record with two of his MMA UFC wins. Mike Jackson, one of the worst fighters in MMA history. And CM Punk, probably the worst fighter in at least UFC history. You get what I'm saying? So let's take those fights out. He's five and five as a pro. And he's going to beat Hafez? Fuck no. Hafez is an absolute lock. He's going to destroy him. If Hafez gets a knockout, that'd be a lot better. It's just he doesn't finish everybody, right? He's not going out on the regional scene and knocking everybody out. He bodies people nicely, though. He's strong. I think he wins. Minus 370, he's a good parlay piece. Plus 295 for Mickey Gall. Hafez to win by KO. Plus 275. I like Hafez as a parlay piece, man. I think it is a decent little parlay snap. You put it in something, we'll talk parlays at the end. I'm confident in Hafez to win, especially seeing him face off. He looked in great shape. I said it all week. A worry for me is going to be Hafez coming onto the damn scale and looking like he lost 15 pounds of muscle because he's off the steroids. I think now maybe he's just naturally jacked. So I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm saying Basil Hafez is now passing my natty test. But I'll tell you, if he fails a drug test, I'm going to expose everything. All right? But I don't think that he will. All right? I'm saying he's all natural. Basil Hafez, the natural specimen by ground and pound TKO is the official pick. But, um, you know, money line parlay piece. Let's keep on running. Let's keep on running up the card. There's more to talk about. Plenty more. Next fight, we got Phil Rowe versus Jake Matthews. Good fight. Interesting fight. I'm going to go with Phil Rowe as a dog. Now, Phil Rowe is not one of the, you know, best fighters on the damn UFC roster. So maybe he's not, uh, you know, the most reliable dog ever. But what I can tell you is his fighting as Neil Magny was a split decision. It was close. It was a quality performance. In a sense, he has similarities to Neil Magny. He's got the long reach. He's got decent boxing from the outside. There's a lot of things to like against Jake Matthews, who's way shorter than him and has a crazy eight and a half inch reach disadvantage. Phil Rowe can box. Okay, he's a Florida guy. I, I knew some guys that were involved with his boxing training actually through the BKFC and Mike Perry. He's got some hands on him. He's not a thudding one-shot knockout artist, but he did sleep Nico Price. Right, he's got some W's here. Jason Wick got flattened by him. Koshke got knocked out by him. Jake Matthews, stand-up, eh. Takedowns, eh. Phil Rowe does a lot of jujitsu on top of the boxing. I think he can fend off Jake Matthews' potential wrestling attempts. I think he's going to be touching him up with straights from the outside, boxing with him nicely. And I think Phil Rowe is uh, en route to winning this fight. But we got to see the scales. Does anything change with the scales here? There is Jake Matthews. Jake Matthews actually has one of the most underrated jacked physiques in the UFC. He's pretty chatted up, man. And then we got Phil Rowe. Unfortunately for Phil Rowe, being 6'3", I mean, we're in 240p right now. We got to wait for this thing to fucking load in. I don't know what the hell is going on. There it is. Boom. Shredded. Great shape. Skinny for sure, but you're not going to be 6'3 with 18-inch uh, arms at 170 pounds. Let's look at the face-off between these two savages, and let's see if there's any inkling of shift here. And you're going to see a little bit of the height difference, and then on top of it, the reach difference is way more. Boom, there it is. 
Phil Rowe can win. Phil Rowe's in great shape, too. Like, I think Phil Rowe is going to pull off a unanimous decision. I think he's a very good underdog, a very live underdog in this fight here. I'm going with Phil Rowe to win. Phil Rowe to get the absolute W, plus 140 by Phil Rowe. Matthews is minus 160 as the favorite. Bro, give me Phil Rowe as an underdog. This is a legit underdog pick, right? It's going to be an interesting fight. I see Jake Matthews looking decent, you know, in the fight against Morales. His hands are definitely there. It's just I think Phil Rowe from range has got him, and if they go to the ground, Phil Rowe's good to go. Also in the clinch, Phil Rowe is good to go. The money line for Rowe, best bet. Probably over, though, at minus 150, and then Rowe by decision is plus 375. So some interesting notes there. Give me Phil Rowe, the fresh prince, to... uh, Take an upset win over Jake Matthews. Let's keep on running up the card. Next fight on the card, we have Grant Dawson versus Joe Selecki. There's a lot of hype on Grant Dawson. You know what? It's dead a little bit, but the grappling skill set and what I hear about him, like Moicano said it, I'm like 80% sure that he said Grant Dawson's the best wrestler at American Top Team. So that's a pretty fucking high accolade to have. Grant Dawson could wrestle his ass off. He does everything Joe Selecki does better. Yes, the pick is obviously Grant Dawson. He's a huge favorite for good reason, but he's also a super confident call. Joe Selecki does not have knockout power. He's not a good boxer. So where is he going to beat Grant Dawson? He's not. He's not. Grant Dawson is going to dominate this fight. I think there is a world where Grant Dawson finishes this fight by submission against the jiu-jitsu practitioner, Joe Selecki. So give me Grant Dawson to dominate. Dawson's beaten wrestlers before. He's beaten guys that are good on the ground. He beat, uh, you know, Mark Madsen, who had some hype at one point. Is Magulov, who's okay. Jared Gordon win. I know you can say, oh, the Ricky Glenn fight. All right, he's two and a half years ago. True, Ricky Glenn was a weird one, but Selecki ain't getting him, man. Selecki ain't getting him. Let's check out the scales. Let's see. Who looks like what on these scales? There is Joe Selecki. Okay, good shape, fit, ready to go, expected. Nice beard on him. There's Grant Dawson, finger to the sky. He's like the uh, all-American fucking Habib at this point, man. We're going Grant Dawson, bro. How do you not? How do you not go Grant Dawson? And then let's look at the face-off. Does anything shift? Do my feelings inside change? When I see them going face to face, oh my God, oh my God, no, nothing changes at all. I'm fucking around. Uh, Joe Selecki's he's pretty jacked. He's got some cool tattoos. Like I can give him some hype, but he's going to lose the fight. It doesn't really matter about anything else. Grant Dawson for the W. Uh, yeah, the betting lines reflect that. He's a minus 575 favorite. Holy shit. Of course. Uh, plus 425 for Joe Selecki. Not into it. I think Grant Dawson still got the goods. I think Grant Dawson dominates this fight. I'm going Grant Dawson to win. I'm saying he's live for a sub at plus 300, but, uh, you know, he could definitely win a decision at minus 110. Dawson down the money line is minus 575. My God, that sucks. Uh, The over one and a half is minus 200. That's not bad, though. The over one and a half minus 200 is not bad at all. I think Grant Dawson is another wide parlay piece type position, unfortunately. He's going to win the fight. He's going to win the fight. But yeah, the bookies know it too. That's why the odds suck. All right, let's keep running. Next fight, heavyweights going after it here. We have Jelton Almeida versus Alexander Romanov. I've been picking Jelton Almeida throughout the week. And I mean, for good reason. It's Jelton Almeida. He's got... Pretty incredible grappling skills. But to be fair, Romanov is a really good grappler and wrestler in his own right. But I think that he has completely skipped out on strength and conditioning. Do you guys remember a few fights ago, Romanov started getting a little bit of upper abs. He was in good shape. I'm like, wow, he's dedicated and dialed in to his UFC career. Well, he went back to Burger King and he's 265 pounds again. Okay, so let's give that up. Jelton Almeida, obviously pretty jacked. Granted, I think he could make a, a you know 205. It's just heavyweight's a lot easier. As Romanov, bro, he's fat. Anybody out there saying that he looks skinnier, you're blind, bro. He's 265. He's looking fat. He's still fat ass Romanov. 
He was skinny at one point, but he ain't skinnier. Not anymore. Oh my gosh, man. Come on, Romanov. Jailton Almeida, I mean, he looks kind of typical. I saw some people saying he looked like he had a belly. But he's still pretty jacked. What is he, 241? He's always weighing around that weight. 240, 238 to 240 is kind of his bread and butter weight. Let me pull up the face off so you can see these guys going nose to nose. I think Jailton Almeida wins the fight. I'm going to say when they go to the ground, you tip the cow over, you probably finish him off. How the fuck are you picking Romanov, bro? Are you kidding me, bro? He's got the build of like a fat 60-year-old man that doesn't exercise. I don't get it. And this is pro. This is pro MMA. JL10 Almeida will body Romanov when it comes down to it. Romanov's gas tank is going to be extremely short. Uh, he's got about a quarter of a tank, and I think that uh, Almeida can probably finish. He might be able to submit Romanov. Maybe he shows some ground and pound. He should body Romanov here, man. Outside of the first round, you can't be confident in Romanov, and now you're going to go out, you're going to pick Romanov to finish? Finish him in the first round? Yeah? Nah. Jail 10 Almeida to win. Minus 350 Almeida, the tag's deserving. I've been waiting all week to really get into this fight because the scales were going to tell me what I needed. If I had 240 Romanov, I'm in a different conversation with you guys right now. But this is old Romanov who looked terrible against Volkov, looked slow and sloppy against a very old Blagoy Ivanov. This is not the Romanov that gave Marcin Tibura a really difficult first round. This is sloppy Romanov. And he's not serious about this shit anymore. And I'm not going to pick him. I mean, yeah, he can beat some of the bum heavyweights, the guys that have no ground skills, because there's a lot of them. But he's not going to beat Jelton, who's got really good jujitsu. Jelton Almeida to win inside of the distance is my official call. Minus 150 for that. I think he finishes Romanov maybe in the second or even third round. Could knock him out in the first. KO win for uh, Jailton plus 285. And then submission win for Jailton plus 140. I think inside distance. I know it's chalky. Minus 150 makes sense. Parlay piece Jailton. Romanov is not in shape, guys. Romanov is not even in the slightest bit of shape. He looks worse than I've seen in a while. I mean, I guess he always look like shit. But still, he looks terrible. He looks terrible. One of the fatter guys on the roster. And I hate to see it. Because I think skill set is there for Romanov. But his gas tanks, eh. He was on his way to losing against Juan Espino, but lucked out with a technical decision. I don't forget about that fight. Jail 10 Almeida is going to whoop his ass. Jail 10 Almeida for the win. Romanov's taking a fat L. Let's keep on running up the card. Our next fight on it, we have Roman Kapilov versus Cesar Almeida. It serves as our featured prelim of the night. I've been picking Cesar Almeida this week. Early predictions from last Sunday, or I guess the Sunday before last, I was on Kapilov, and I pick-flipped. I pick-flipped pre-way and pick-flip. <sighs> Worrisome fight. Weird fight. I think that the reason I'm going with Almeida is because I'm going to anticipate that he is the better striker. Even though Kapilov's a great MMA striker, I got to respect the kickboxing credentials. And Kapilov hasn't shown me that he can consistently wrestle and control from top where I'm going to go out here and pick him against Almeida. I don't know. Initially, right, when I was breaking it down two Sundays ago, I was like, huh. I was like, maybe Kapilov landing trips, takedowns. That was what my brain was thinking. But the more I thought about the match, I'm like, Kapilov's not really bodying anybody on the ground. Yeah, he might land a trip here or there, but his game is not take you down, control, wear on you, and then strike. It's mostly striking. So I have to go with the pure striker. I'm going Almeida for the win. Now let's check him out on the scales. Let's see how Caesar Almeida looks. Back-to-back -back Almeida's up in here. ba bum 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 ba -na, ba -na. I don't know why we're not getting Roman Kapilov. We just got Caesar Almeida. Roman Kapilov just got gypped, guys. We can't get a Roman Kapilov pick. Are you kidding me? This is on the fucking fly. This is live. It is what it is. Caesar Almeida. There he is, looking like a psychopath. Caesar Almeida is ready to fight. And I will bring up the face off. I mean, if any fight, somebody didn't show up, like Romanov, if he wouldn't have shown up, I would have been freaking out. But. With this fight here, we know that Kapilov comes in shape, and you actually get a good angle look at his physique here. He came in ripped, ready to rock. Weird that Almeida's an inch taller. I wonder if he's wearing sandals. Kapilov has shoes. I don't remember what they were wearing when I was watching the weigh-ins. But either way, I think that Cesar Almeida is live to win a hard fight with Kapilov. 
But damn, bro, this is not one that I'm going out money lining. I ain't attacking nothing. I'm, I'm thinking about this one is pure entertainment. And we're going to find out what Almeida can do. I will say, I don't know why I didn't like Almeida's scream. It kind of just turned me off. I'm like, Almeida, don't be screaming like that. He's reminding me of Venecia Salvador before he gets chinned. But, I mean, if the scream curse is a thing, then maybe he's getting knocked out. But right now, I'm sticking with Almeida. And if I have to take it on the chin, well... It is what it is, bro. I've been very torn on this fight. Minus 117, Almeida. Kapilov, minus 103. Everybody's torn on this damn fight. Over is minus 105. You know what? I'm just going to sit back and fucking relax. Watch the beautiful action ensue. I think that Cesar Almeida can win. And if he does win, he is on the fast track in the UFC middleweight division. My God. Because he's a former kickboxer. He's got history with Alex Pereira. There's a lot to like. Roman Kapilov is not an easy out, but it is a matchup stylistically that favors Cesar Almeida. So I will pick Cesar Almeida to beat Roman Kapilov. I'll say it's a competitive fight. I'll pick him by a decision. And uh, yeah, that's the feature prelim. Let's keep running. Next fight on the card, we have our main card opener. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you smash that like button. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe it up. We got Randy Brown versus Alizio Zaleski. I've been going with Randy Brown throughout the whole week, but with caution, and a cautionary tale is simple. I mean, Zaleski's a bad man. Zaleski's 37, but he's still an absolute pit bull. Now, Renat Fakhredinov dropped him in the first round, but he was able to weather the early storm and get a damn draw in that fight. The Abu, Abu Bakar and Nurmagomedov fight sucked. My God, that was terrible, right? And then Benoit Santini, he beat the shit out of. There's some respect on that, but that's two and a half years ago. As two and a half years ago, he was 34. Now he's 37. I'm going Randy Brown by decision. I think Brown boxes him up. I think Brown's going to have good movement from the outside, speed edge on him. The jiu-jitsu of Brown is good. The range advantage is very legit here. I feel like Randy Brown's been looking pretty good as of late. I mean, he knocked out Salikov in one big shot. Uh, you know, I had some trouble with Terman early, but still outboxed him for the most part. JDM, it's fine. Trinaldo win. Chaos Williams split decision has aged pretty well because Chaos just destroyed Carlson Harris. I'm going to go Randy Brown by a decision. I almost said split decision. Maybe a split decision would make sense here. But Randy Brown to win the fight. All right, crazy man. Cesar Almeida still up. There's Zaleski. He still looks like a savage, man. Even at 37, he looks good. Randy Brown looks good as well. Brown is tall and long, man. Set what, 73 to 78 inch reach? Is that the difference? We'll double check it in a sec. But let's pull up the face off. And you'll see the height advantage, obviously, towards Randy Brown. But both guys are looking ready to rock. Both guys are in good shape here. Both guys know what they're bringing to the table. Both guys know what's on the line. Uh, you know, any bit of hope to get up in the rankings. I don't know. I think Randy Brown can beat an aging Zaleski. And he's got power. I mean, he showed it against Salikov. He could catch Zaleski with the right hand from the outside. I'm like slurring my words. This is Zaleski over here. I'm going Randy Brown to win, bro. I think he beats an aging Brazilian in Zaleski. I think his boxing is slick and quick. I think he touches him with a big right hand and maybe even drops him, and then he wins a decision. Minus 175 for rude boy Randy Brown. Zaleski is plus 150. Let's see, what's Brown? KO is only plus 300. Brown by decision, plus 185. I mean, I'm picking Randy Brown. He's minus 175. It's one of the more close money fights on this card. I mean, the feature prelim, this one. There's some other ones that are pretty damn wide. What do we got? Four fights that are like not, you know, minus 250 or more. I'm going to go with Randy Brown. I say he gets it done. By a decision, but maybe lands a knockdown along the way. But Zaleski's durable and, uh, you know, is able to survive. Brown doesn't go crazy trying to knock him out, but he does box him up and he secures a win. So Randy Brown, to pull it off against Zaleski, is my pick for the first fight on the main card. Let's keep running. Next fight on the main card, we have Nico Price versus Alex Morono 2. I'm calling Nico Price to get knocked out, okay? I'm going Alex Morono to win. Um, I think he is very, very live to get a KO of, I feel like, a deteriorated version of Nico Price. 
I think Alex Morono's pretty good. He had kind of an amp performance against a very dangerous version of Court McGee. Uh, but the Buckley performance wasn't awful. The Tim Means win was nice. The Ponzinibbio loss was a fight he was winning. Semmelsberger, W. I'm calling Morono the uh, confident lock, man. I think he's very live to pull through. I think he can catch Nico Price with some shots over the top. Potentially buckle the knees and follow up with big shots on the ground. Could even club and sub him. But Morono to pull it off is something I feel pretty good about and Nico Price at this point has not looked good in some time went over Alex Oliveira but Oliveira is no longer with the company you got the Cowboy Soroni fight almost four years ago now wasn't impressive Go, goes distance with Pereira but got beaten up Phil Rowe knocked him out Robbie Lawler knocked him out bad Morono was dropping him in the first fight but then ended up getting knocked out there's a lot on the line for Morono it's vengeance here and I'm saying he's getting revenge I'm going with Alex Morono I think he can get it let's check out the scales between these two. Alex Morono is not really a guy that looks impressive on the scales. He's got a pretty average physique, to be fair. Nico Price looked okay, actually. Nico Price looked pretty lean. He looked pretty dialed in. But I don't know, man. I think he's getting knocked the fuck out. I think Morono's going to find the chin. Morono, at this point, is just a better fighter than him. And he's been on a roll as of recent, even in losses like... He's taking a way better opposition. I think this is the perfect time for these two to rematch. I think Morono and him deliver an absolute scrap. And I think Morono's live for a second or third round KO. And he flattens Nico Price in a pretty good war. I think that Nico Price might catch him with some big shots. But Morono weathers the storm and knocks him out. And what should be a sick fight. I'm actually really excited to see these two scrap, man. I'm going lock Morono because I'm just an absolute maniac. And uh, I put it on the fucking sweaty fight. Because I know these guys are going to stand and trade. Minus 250, Morono. Knockout win for Morono is plus 215. What's Morono sub? Only plus 450? Under two and a half, minus 145. I think we got a good chance to go under. I think both of these guys are going to bring fire. I think this could actually end up being fight of the night. And I'm going to say Alex Morono pulls off a late knockout on Nico Price in impressive fashion. And I can't wait to see it. Good rematch. Next fight on the card, we have our featured bout of the night. Kevin Holland versus Mikal Olak Jaychuk. I've been picking Kevin Holland, but my God, has this fight flown very under the radar all week. And Kevin Holland is a chalky favorite. Minus 290 range? Olak Jaychuk's really dangerous with his hands. He can fucking box, man. Oleg Jaychuk is a worrisome fight. It's a worrisome fight for Kevin Holland. And we're going to check them out on the scales. And what you're going to say about Oleg Jaychuk is, you know what, you'll hear what I say. Give me one second, all right? Oleg Jaychuk. Somehow, someway, this guy has the physique of a guy that hasn't left his fucking desk chair in maybe four years. I don't understand how he was at 205. If you told me he was a lightweight, I believe you. Luckily, this is MMA and not the physique championship. Holland looks fat, bro. Holland looks fat. What the fuck? Do you see Kevin Holland's stomach and cheeks, man? This is chubby Kevin Holland. It reminds me of somebody. Who? Ryan Spann. You know who else it reminds me of? Terrence McKinney. Guys, I don't like the look of Kevin Holland, man. I do not like it one bit. We'll pull up the face off between these two. But right now, I got to tell you, I don't like Kevin Holland's frame. Now you can say, oh, but Oleg Jacek looks like shit. Yeah, but he always looks like shit. Kevin Holland doesn't always look. Look at the fat on the sides. Did he train for this fight? Bro, Oleg Jacek is a tough out. And Oleg Jacek and him somehow are the same height. I thought Oleg Jacek was shorter. Oleg Jacek's coming to kill, man. Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it, man? Am I going to do it? You know what? I have this weird feeling inside of me that I can't describe. Give me Oleg J. Chuck. Pick flip it. Pick flip it. Kevin Holland's out of shape. Kevin Holland didn't train properly for this fight. He's overlooking Oleg J. Chuck. He's coming for the paycheck. He knows even with a loss, he can still get good fights at 170. And Oleg J. Chuck is going to end up clipping him with a big shot and pulling off an upset win. I think it might be a decision upset win. I don't know if Oleg J. Chuck chins him. He might chin him. But, bro, this is not a good version of Holland. And this is my issue. Is I've been saying, okay, Kevin Holland, how does he win? I think he has a real shot of getting this fight to the ground, right? And he could choke out Oleg Jaychuk. But when is Holland turning into Mr. Wrestler? And now I got Kevin Doughboy Holland? I can't stick with it. It happens. We'll see. 
So who are you going to trust, guys? Who are you going to trust? AJ post weigh-in or AJ pre-weigh-in? You find out. We'll see. Minus 280 for Kevin Holland is the favorite. He doesn't deserve that tag. Plus 240, Oleg Jaychuk. I have to do it. Occasionally, you got to just throw the savage line. Listen, I've been pick flipping. My past two pick flips have been money. Can I make it three post weigh-in pick flips in a row? Maybe. Maybe so. Plus 240 for Oleg Jaychuk. And then looking at it, uh, Oleg Jaychuk to win in what methods here? Decision Oleg Jaychuk is plus 750. Knockout is plus 375. Let's think for a second. Last three wins. Sam Alvey knockout. Cody Brundage KO. Chi and Jaquani knockout. Losses. Submission to Pereira. Submissions to Barajo. And then Kevin Holland's recent wins. Knockout of Ponzinibbio. Knockout of Chiesa. But two kind of duddish performance here where, I don't know, he seems somewhat checked out and more in a sparring pace. Yeah, he's got a bit of a reach advantage here on Oleg Jaychuk, but Oleg Jaychuk is a former light heavyweight. You can dig into Oleg Jaychuk's record, right? And you're going to see he's fought some decent names, right? The Roundtree fight some years ago. I'm 99% sure he won that fight. But they fucking overturned. I hate that they don't tell you the record. I'm 99% sure that Oleg Jaychuk got a decision in that fight. Uh, Gian Vellante, body shot, and Tagulov lost some, you know, savages by submission. Look, submission, submission, Jacoby decision. My God, is he this live? The Bukowskis fight was a split some years ago. You know what, man? I don't know. Fuck logic. Fuck everything else. Oleg Jaychuk's a live underdog, not because he has this super impressive resume, but he's a UFC veteran. He's younger than Kevin Holland at 29, and Kevin Holland looks to be in bad shape. And if Oleg Jaychuk really dialed in for this camp, I don't care about the physical look because he never looks good. I think he could beat a Kevin Holland who's not taking this fight seriously. So I'm going with Oleg Jaychuk. Got a weird feeling about this one, and we'll see if I end up... Uh, being an absolute savage and getting it right. Let's keep running. Our co-main event of the evening is Sean Strickland versus Paulo Costa. I got another underdog. I'm going Paulo Costa in this fight. I've been picking him all week. I think he's going to knock Sean Strickland out. I do. I have this feeling inside of me that I can't describe. Like, I see Costa's physicality being too much for Strickland. Everybody thinks now Strickland is this invincible guy because he beat Izzy and he should have beat DDP. And then Costa just catches him with either a winging shot or a crazy ass kick and fucking flattens him. I'm going with Paulo Costa by KOTKO. And I think something that needs to be said is this is an active Paulo Costa. And I'm very excited to see what active Paulo Costa can do. Now, as far as the scales, we're going to look. How do these guys look on the scales? What type of frames do we got? Well, Paulo Costa is the most jacked fucking middleweight ever. Absolute savage. I think he's more jacked than Prime Vitor Belfort. The secret juice is... That's some bling right there, bro. I want, I want my own, actually. Paulo Costa, what the fuck? Sean Strickland looking lean, mean, but a little bit sleepy. I don't know how to describe it, but I feel like Sean Strickland isn't himself. I don't know. It's something in his eyes. I don't know. Something is telling me that Sean Strickland isn't the magical Sean Strickland of yesteryear. He had his title, he lost it, and now he's going to lose here to Paulo Costa. Look at them side by side. Look at Paulo Costa and him. Sean Strickland is flexing his tricep hard here. Paulo Costa is completely relaxed, right? Paulo Costa is a legit, uh, you know, physical specimen with knockout power for sure. And I think that he can put pressure on Strickland. I think Costa's chin could take Strickland's best shots. Look at the traps and neck on both of these guys. Look at it. Look at the difference. You see an absolute savage fucking neck here with Paulo Costa. And then you see like a more average and thinner trap there with Strickland. I don't know, man. I just think physicality is a factor in this fight. I'm saying that Paulo Costa, who could easily be a damn heavyweight, is taking out the former welterweight Sean Strickland via knockout and putting some damn respect on his name right now. Costa is plus 210, the underdog. Sean Strickland is a minus 245 favorite. Paulo Costa to win by a KOTKO is plus 385, but just money line. I don't care about these props. Just money line, that is the A side. I think that Paulo Costa could body kick Sean Strickland, hurt him there, and slow him down. I think he can catch him with shots up high. And I think Paulo Costa with the win is uh, going to get fans going kind of crazy once again. We're going Paulo Costa for the upset over Sean Strickland, and which should be an interesting fight. Let's keep running. Let's get to our main. 
the main event of the evening. If you guys haven't yet, make sure you smash the likes. And if you're new to the channel, subscribe. We got Islam Mahachev versus Dustin Poirier. I'm picking Islam by submission. I think he's going to get Poirier to the ground and body him. Now, I get the Rocky story dreams for a lot of people with Dustin Poirier. But I think that Islam Makachev can do well patiently striking with him when Poirier starts to unload, changing levels, working towards ground control. A lot of people are pushing that Makachev doesn't have the wrestling to take Poirier down. Are we forgetting that Chandler was on his back? Are we forgetting? I know Chandler's a decent wrestler, but come on. Come on. It's Makachev. Dagestan. Think about the last fight. Benoit saint was bodying Poirier and seemed en route to a submission win. Makachev is a different level than Benoit saint Okay? Okay. Makachev is going to beat Dustin Poirier by submission, and he probably gets him in the rear naked choke, which has been Poirier's ultimate weakness. I see Makachev winning by rear naked choke. The same thing we've seen in all these damn title fights with Poirier. He's caught in the strangulation, man, and I think he's going to end up tapping out. Maybe he goes to sleep because this is his last ride. Second or third round. Second or third round. Makachev is going to fight smart. Makachev is not going to box like a maniac. Makachev is going to get this fight to the floor. A lot of people say his wrestling is so much worse than Habib's, yada dee, yada do. His wrestling is very good and especially good enough to control Poirier and win by submission. Makachev has said it all week. Poirier struggles with wrestling guys. And now he's going to go out and just strike with him. Not saying he couldn't strike with him. Not saying he couldn't throw a kick up high and land it. But odds are Makachev takes this fight to where he is most dominant, which is in the grappling, completely neutralizing those punching powerful shots of Dustin Poirier. So Makachev to win is the official call. We'll check him out on the scales, see if any feelings shift here. I doubt it. Poirier looks good. Good shape, Poirier. Cool shades on. I respect DP, but unfortunately, this is not Rocky, okay? This is real life. Tony Ferguson's on like a seven-fight losing streak, about to be on an eight-fight losing streak. Anderson Silva's leg snapped and he fell apart after. Come on. This is the fight game. You guys know this is the fight game. This is not Rocky. Makachev looks like a savage, jacked as hell. He's in great shape, man. He's not Makachev's that guy, bro. I'm a Makachev fan, I won't lie. He's grown on me more and more, especially with his roast of Daniel Cormier being fat. I absolutely find that shit hilarious. All right, let's look at the face-off. Poirier is giving strong energy, but you know what Makachev's energy is? I'm just better than you, bro. And he knows it, and I think Poirier knows it too. Islam Makachev, rear naked strangle. This picture doesn't even look real to me. It's so HD. I feel like this is a damn docked image. Like, it doesn't seem real. It's doctored. Yeah, I'm going with Makachev by sub. That is the official prediction for this fight. Rear naked strangle. The money line is wide as hell. My God, you can't get nothing on the money line. Minus 650. Minus 500. Makachev's too wide of a favorite. Poirier's plus 475. I know the Poirier fans are betting in droves. Under three and a half, minus 275. I think so. Double thumbs up there. Makachev to win via submission, minus 110. Think likely. Inside distance, Makachev is minus 290. I think likely too. He's going to finish Poirier, even Poirier himself, since somebody's going out in this fight. And unfortunately, either Poirier's going to tap or he's going to sleep. Makachev win by submission in the main event of UFC 302. Those are my full card post weigh-in predictions, but we're not done yet. We got to talk some parlays, and I'm going to go lightning speed with the parlays with confidence and likelihood of success, maybe mixed in with some value. So we're going to go Basil Hafez, who I think is going to win. We're also going to go with the jacked Brazilian in Jail 10 Almeida, whose confidence has grown on me after the weigh-in, and then Grant Dawson. We have plus 106 for that. Now, if you want to be a savage and you want to also put in the savage lock at this point, this is going to be probably fight of the night. Morono Price, plus 188 for those four together. But if you want to leave the lockout, I understand you still get plus money territory with these three animals here. Guys that I think have grappling advantages over their opponents and especially cardiovascular advantage for Almeida versus Mr. Cheeseburger over there and uh, fucking Romanov. All right. What else do we got? What else do we got? We got plus 106 for this. This is like a safer call. Makachev to win plus 141. Even if you went Makachev inside distance, he's probably getting it done inside distance. Plus 188. Okay. That's a little something, right? That's a little something, something. But I need more heat. 
I don't want to bore you guys. I've done the safe parlays throughout the week, like Hafez and Morono or Hafez now in Almeida. Lima is kind of, I've lost a bit of confidence in him just a little bit, but I do think you can still put him in. So I am going to say the battle of the Brazilian savagery. Andre Lima, okay? We're putting him in the parlay, the Brazilian parlay. Jailton Almeida. We're going all Brazilians. You think I'm playing around? Caesar Almeida. Zaleski on the lineup. And Marco Polo, Polo Costa, plus 2,628. Yes, I'm not picking Zaleski, but in the Brazilian parlay, he could come through. Now, if you don't like Zaleski, I didn't pick him. Going with just Brazilian picks, it's plus 970. And if you're like, you know what? I also trust Russians. Give me Oleg Jaychuk, give me Makachev, plus 4,154. I think this is live as well. I think this is a savage parlay. It's live. Could happen. Now, could it not? Of course, the fucking fight game. But it could. It could. Basil Hafez, the over in this ladies fight here makes sense. Minus 117. Look at that. That's fight goes distance. My goodness. I mean, I do fight goes distance, to be honest. But over, minus 133. <clears throat> and then Jail 10 Almeida, boom, plus 134. That's good shit right there, man. That's good shit right there. Then you want to go savage mode, you go Phil Rowe. Go Oleg Jaychuk. You go Paulo Costa. You want to be an animal? Okay, there you go. Some underdog savagery. Makachev to win. Plus 6,700. Dude, this is, there's some ways to be a savage on this card. And there's some real possibility with some of these more animalistic type parlays. Now, I do want to do, uh, you know, something a little bit crazy here. We're going to go Jelton Almeida wins inside of the distance at minus 150. We're going to go with Makachev wins inside of the distance at hopefully minus 105. Maybe you won't find it as good, but it's okay. It's not the end of the world if you don't, all right? And then we're going to also add in the side of Hafez early on in the night, plus 318. So that's pretty damn nice, man, bringing them all together at a plus 318 tag. I like the likelihood of success. The over in the Perez fight, boom, plus 471. And then what else can we add to it that's high confidence? Morono, plus 699. I don't know why I'm more worried about Morono post weigh-ins than pre. I think it's just because Nico Price came in in good shape. But I know he's reckless, and I know Morono can catch him. So I'm still believing in my guy. I'm not jumping off the lock by any means. I'm just saying maybe some parlays you do with and you do without. To have a little blend, a little blend to you. You know what I'm saying? Well, we got some savage calls. Listen, guys. There are some savage calls to be made. Run it through with the picks. You can underdog savage it up. You can go high confidence calls on it too. I hope you guys bet intelligently. But first and foremost, I hope you enjoyed this video. Much love to everybody supporting. Make sure you all smash the hell out of the like button. If you're new, subscribe to the channel. Turn the post notifications on if you haven't. I got daily content and live streams dropping. Let me know in the comments what you thought of the picks. And if you have nothing to say in the comments, just drop a W in the chat to boost the algorithm for your boy. Thank you guys all for supporting, man. We also have a new members-only Discord that started up. So if you're a member, run to the recent stream. You'll see it right there. And I'll get it posted on the members community tab ASAP as well. Much love, everybody. Thank you all for watching. See you all for the fight companion. Peace out.